Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is going to be the first five things that you should do after you have set up a brand new computer. And I'm gonna start off with an apology. You see, on behalf of myself and others like me who have done videos on YouTube about how to build a computer, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I've ever built a system, gotten to this point where it's all put together, press the power button to turn things on, and then leave you guys with this. Reboot or select proper boot device, or insert boot media and select the boot device and press a key. We'll do this, and we'll build the system and think, hey, everything's good to go, you've built a new computer, but can you really use this computer in this state? No, you can't. You need to, like, install Windows. There's a few other things I like to do before I install Windows. So that's what this video is going to be about. It is a tutorial, so I'm going to be walking you through everything step by step. And I'm going to be doing some screen capture and all that kind of good stuff. So you can keep pressing a button and nothing will happen, but let's do something more productive and gather the essential tools that you will need for today's tutorial. Now, apart from the computer that you just built, nice and fresh and new, you will of course need a keyboard and mouse, you'll need a monitor to connect it to, and then you will be needing an internet connection, as represented by this purple ethernet cable right here. Beyond that, you will also need another computer, because you're going to need something else to connect to the internet with to mainly get Windows 10 set up on a USB drive, but also just in case you need to download some drivers before your new computer has internet connectivity. Uh, you will need a USB drive, so this is just a little 8 gig drive. You need 4 gigs minimum, and I recommend a USB 2 or USB 3 if you want things to go at any kind of reasonable speed. Finally, uh, and this is just a fair warning to any of you guys who are actually using this as a tutorial for an upgrade, uh, upgrading a system or installing Windows on a system that might have data or something on there already. An external drive, something that you can plug into the system while it's working, copy everything onto it. Um, again, there's nothing to copy off of this one right now since it's brand new, but make sure that if you have any personal information, uh, pictures, my documents, anything that's irreplaceable that you can't re-download from the web, uh, like basic program installers and stuff, get that onto an external drive, unplug it, set it aside, and that way you'll know that even if something terrible goes wrong, you will still have your data and you can rebuild everything the way it was before. Then the last thing you'll need if we're being thorough is a Windows 10 license. Uh, you can get those for fairly cheap via kingwin.net and I'll post a link to my video about that right here. That place is not 100% on the up and up according to some people. There's arguments that go on about that, so if you do want to buy a full license that should work just as well. But the way I'm going to have this set up for you is once you install Windows you can start using it and then in the future when you get your Windows key, you just type that in plug it in and then it will activate and you'll be good to go. Step one of this process though is going to be to test everything, which we kind of did at the beginning or the end of the build video where we powered it on and we saw that fans were spinning. So I've got this fan I installed on the side panel here, that one's spinning, the system's on. Uh, I can see that the front fan there is spinning as well, power supply fan is spinning. Uh, the only fans that might not be spinning are the ones on the graphics cards. Some newer graphics cards will only spin the fans when the graphics card actually gets warm enough to need that. So we can visually look and say, all right, fans are spinning, we're good to go. But there are a few other things you should probably check on. To do those additional checks, we will need to access the UEFI, also known as BIOS at some points. I can reach the power button, of course. Right after you power the system on, just start tapping the delete button on your keyboard. It is almost always a delete button. I haven't encountered any modern key or modern motherboard that uses anything other than deletes. But by tapping that button, right as the system powers on, it tells the system, let's go into the UEFI or the BIOS. Now the BIOS or UEFI is a great thing to get a little bit familiar with. You don't need to know all of the ins and outs of it, but basically understand that this is part of the motherboard. So once we install Windows onto one of the drives over here, these are kind of two separate entities, but we can make some changes here and check some stuff in the UEFI before we've even installed Windows to the drive. And we can also make sure that when we do install Windows, everything is going to go nice and smooth. Now, the first thing I like to do is just basically a reality check. So this is going along with checking everything in the system to make sure it's all up and running. Uh, most BIOS or, or new and improved updated BIOS UEFI versions do have mouse support and they also frequently have an easy mode which is what we're looking at right now. You can see it says easy mode in the top left. This is uh, the BIOS for the B150M Pro 4V from ASRock and it gives us a quick look at, for instance, what's installed. So we can see our i5-6500 CPU has been recognized there as well as its processor speed. We can see DRAM information here. So DIMMs A1, A2, B1, and B2 and we can see that it is recognizing two 8 gig sticks installed there, which is what we installed, so that's good too. Down here for storage configuration, you can see all the uh, plugs that we might connect storage drives to, and since I have unplugged 
the two terabyte drive already, and I'll show you that, why I did that in just a sec. Uh, I can see that all I have connected right now is my SanDisk SSD. That's the only one that's recognized. I can even see fans over here. There's only three headers on the board, and I have fans connected to all three of them, and all of them are reporting back that the fans are spinning. So that's nice, too. Now you might also take a look at your temperatures, which are reported up here. CPU temperatures between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius are usually normal for being reported in the BIOS. It's also got motherboard temperature, voltage, a little bit more advanced stuff if you're willing to get into it. One thing you should pay attention to is gonna be boot priority. Now again, right now we only have a single drive connected, so it's only showing a single drive here. But if I plugged in another drive, it would also show here and we need to choose which one we want to boot to. So you can set that boot priority in the BIOS if you want to, or you can use a shortcut key. Uh, it happens to be F11 on this motherboard, also while the system's starting up. And there you can just tell it for one time use, boot from this USB or boot from this hard drive. This should give you a pretty good at a glance idea of what's connected, what's being recognized, which should hopefully be all of the stuff that you installed. However, one other thing that you might want to do, and this is a being thorough type of step, is to check all the other different stuff on the motherboard, all the other different connection points that might not have things connected to them for right now. So for instance, our DRAM is in slots uh, A2 and B2 right now. We could power the system down completely, uh, switch off the power supply, and then move those two DIMMs over uh, to the to A1 and B, uh, yeah, A1 and B1 slots. Then power back on and make sure they recognize there as well, just to make sure all the all the DIMM slots on the motherboard work. Uh, there's other things we could test. I recommend uh, USB ports on the front. If you have drives plugged into there, they should show up here in the BIOS as well. Uh, and then there's other stuff that you might check as you go on further through the installation pr uh, process. And definitely make sure you have checked everything by the time you got Windows up and running, which would also include all these ports on the back panel. So the other USB ports back here. Um, I have currently plugged in the monitor via the HDMI plug on the graphics card down here at the bottom. You can check the video outs on the motherboard themselves, even though you're not trying to use them. And then of course the audio there and possibly even the other display outs on the graphics card. Again, that's being completely thorough. I'll admit I don't usually do all that stuff, but it is something that would be good to check right off the bat, just in case you have a faulty port or something like that. It's better to spot it now while you're still within your return policy period than waiting until much later down the line. Speaking of shutting down though, I'm gonna hit F10, which is almost always the shortcut for save, changes, and exits. If not, there should be another option there uh, on, on in the BIOS to do it. Not all BIOSes are the same. And um, now the system's restarting, which I didn't really want it to do. I wanted it to shut off. Uh, if you don't have Windows installed yet and you need to shut off, you should be able to just push the power button and it should turn off. If it doesn't, you can hold in the power button until the system shuts down. That's kind of a brute force way of doing it. And I only recommend doing that uh, if it's a last ditch scenario or if you're just in pre-operating system stuff. In that case, it won't really matter too much. A brief in-between step here before we move on to the uh, finer points of installing Windows is I only like to have the drive I'm installing Windows to actually connected while I'm going through the installation process. So what I did here with my 3.5 inch drive, which is just gonna be storage, is I just went and unplugged the SATA cable from it, um, which is pretty simple. You could actually plug just the SATA data cable, or you can unplug the power cable, one or the other. Either way, the drive won't work anymore, at least won't be recognized as connected to the system. And then of course, power the system back on again, and press delete again to go back into the BIOS again. And then a couple settings in there we wanna make sure we have set properly. So now that I'm back in the UEFI, there's two things I would almost always like to do with a new build um, in the UEFI before I move on to the actual installation of Windows. Now I just hit F6 and that's to go over to advanced mode. And like I was saying, most of these newer motherboards have an easy mode here with a more of a, a more familiar or friendly graphical interface but then also an advanced mode, which is gonna be more familiar for people who have used older uh, UEFI or BIOS interfaces before. Uh, it's got a list of topics across the top that you can sort of switch between. Each one has a bunch of sub settings down below. So the main, again, will just kind of give you an idea of everything that's connected. You can also add favorites here. All we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna check the memory, speed, and the settings for the storage. Memory speed is listed here under OC Tweaker. You can go to DRAM configuration, and then there's timings and different clocks that you can set. The frequency of the memory that I have chosen is, uh, that I have installed here is 2666. However, since this is not a Z170 board, it's actually not allowing me to access those because Intel sees those as OC or overclock speeds. They're not supported on this type of motherboard. So this is one reason why you might actually consider a Z170 motherboard for your motherboard of choice 
rather than something uh, that's more along, along the budget lines like an H170 or an H150 or the B150 that I have installed right now because it will allow you to access those. Now this isn't a huge deal, memory speed running at 2133 is just fine, um, but it is something that I would do if I had a Z170 board, I'll show you that in just a second. The other thing I would do on a Z170 board is, uh, or I would do on just about any board, is again try to look at my storage configuration. And in storage configuration here, we can see the SATA controllers as well as the mode that they are set to. Now, this being an ASRock board and being a more budget board, it doesn't have the settings that I would typically see here, which would be the choice for the whole controller of AHCI or RAID or older legacy IDE mode. This does have the ability to tell the motherboard what type of device you have connected. So I have gone and chosen a solid state drive here. So that, for the purposes of this motherboard, seems it's gonna be all we can do to tell it uh, what to do as far as our storage connectivity. So I switched real quick and now I've plugged the, the system back here in so we can take a look at that UEFI which is a little bit more advanced. This is an X99 motherboard and um, here you can see again the same sort of basic layout although I have to get further away to use the mouse for this computer. So again this is the easy mode that we're looking at first. We can see memory listed up here. I don't know what the deal is with the memory speeds. I'm not worrying about that for, for right now fans and all that good stuff that you might expect to see. So really similar to what we saw with the Azerac BIOS. Over here in advanced mode though, when I, which I can access with F7, we can see a little bit more things that we can do. So over here in AI Tweaker, uh, I can actually go and access the DRAM stuff and that will allow us, that will allow me to set the DRAM frequency. I can actually just manually set it here depending on whatever the memory is that I purchased. So if I bought a 2800 speed kit of memory, I could just set that like that or we can use the XMP settings, uh, which should be available, I think they're back up here. Yes, uh, XMP right there, which will automatically set the XMP setting for the memory at 2667, which is the kit that I have currently installed. Now the other thing I was talking about is storage configuration. So over here under, under advanced, we have PCH storage configuration. And in here, we have the ability to change the actual mode of the SATA controller that we're looking at. Now the reason I bring this up is simply because it will save you a lot of hassle in the future if you're planning on doing RAID. Most of these right now will default to AHCI. That's what you'll get and that's what you should stick with, whether you're using SSDs or hard drive. IDE is a legacy mode. I don't recommend using that. It's really not necessary for new computers. It's made so you can have backwards compatibility, but you don't need that. You'd much rather have faster uh, connectivity and a little bit more efficiency, so you want AHCI. If you do plan on doing RAID, either now or in the future, switch to RAID mode now. Even if you're just using a single drive, you can still have a single drive with Windows, connected, Windows installed on it uh, using RAID mode. What am I doing though? This isn't even the right computer. Let me switch back. There are of course lots of other things you could do in the UEFI or BIOS, but uh, I want to keep this simple. So let's move on to the next stage, which is going to be creating that Windows 10 installer USB. So grab your USB drive, make sure you have another computer set up. I've got this one right over here. And of course you're going to need an internet connection in order to download the ISO. And ISO is basically like a snapshot of a CD or a disk image or something. You download that ISO, which is the data, and then you use the Windows installation app to take that and shove it onto here. And then this becomes the installer and you can use that to shove Windows 10 onto your SSD. Not to be too technical about it. Next up, we're actually going to create the Windows 10 USB installer. So for that, go over to this website. It's a Microsoft.com site that's linked in the video description. And you're going to want to download the media creation tool just by clicking the download tool now button. And then that should start to download. Once the download's finished, you can launch the media creation tool. And uh, you should see it pop up just like this. Uh, you need to agree to the license terms and then it'll take just a moment to get set up. Um, this will basically download uh, the Windows 10 ISO and plop it onto that USB drive for you. Uh, we don't want to upgrade this PC. We want to create installation media for another PC and click next. Uh, the defaults here should be just fine. You want Windows 10 and you want 64-bit. You'd have the option to select others if you want to. We want to choose USB flash drive and then hit next. It will then go onto our system and it only found one viable drive to use here. So that's the one we want to choose. Hit next again and it will start the installation. 
So once that media creation tool is all finished, you should have your drive with the Windows installation files on it. So we'll eject that from our other computer and connect it to our new computer. Here it is. Uh, I'm just gonna plug it in the back here. Oh yeah, I'm still in the BIOS here, so uh, let's go ahead and save and reset. And uh, you remember how I told you about that boot menu? The boot menu uh, is important right now, because what we want to tell the computer is that USB drive that I just plugged in, we now want to boot from. So I have tapped F11 as the system was starting, and this brought me to this menu right here, which will actually let me individually choose uh, to boot from anything that's connected. Uh, so this is the SATA drive, this is what it would default to. I just put in this new USB disk, so I'm going to click on that and it should immediately start booting off of that. And it should show, cool, a Windows 10 logo right there in the middle, which means it's initiating loading up the Windows 10 installer environment. Awesome, here we go. Uh, language time and keyboard inputs, English works. Uh, install now. Note that you can also repair your computer with this tool, so uh, don't get rid of this USB or reformat it once you've actually gone through the setup. We'll hit OK, and uh, again, just a couple more seconds to wait. Now, here is an important part. You can activate Windows and actually punch your license in right here if you want to, or you can click this button. I don't have a product key, which I'm gonna do right now. This will let you go through with the installation, um, and then you'll be able to input your product key later. Uh, we'll just go with Windows 10 Pro, just to start off with, again. Uh, if you enter a product key for a different version later on, like Home, it will just change the version that you have installed. I accept the license, I click Next, and then here we almost, well, we definitely want to click Custom rather than Upgrade. You can use this to upgrade from an old computer, but Custom is always the way I, I like to go. Now, fortunately, we have pretty much a brand new SSD, or at least I've made that SSD look like a brand new SSD there. So we only have a single drive, drive zero, uh, and that is because I disconnected all the other drives. Now, you might see more stuff here. You might see drive zero with a partition and then drive zero with another partition. If that is the case, I recommend selecting all those partitions and using the delete button to delete them all until you just have unallocated space. You just want a nice blank empty drive to work with here. One final trick, and this is kind of a little bit more advanced, but I will tell you guys how to do it. If you hit Shift F10 in this menu, you can pull up a command prompt, and this will allow you to do a bit more fanciness if you really have problem installing to the drive that you're installing to. Um, now, I would say only use this in dire scenarios. Uh, if you don't see a drive listed here at all, for example, you might need to click Load Driver. And in this case, you might need to download a driver from, say, your motherboard manufacturer's website and then load it up here by clicking Browse. And then that would allow you to say, you could just put it on, on the same installation USB that you had uh, Windows 10 on and then you could select it there, load up a driver, and then that will tell the Windows 10 installer how to talk to, um, how to, talk to uh, the, the, the hardware that you're currently working with. We're not going to do that though, um, but I will show you how to totally clean a drive if it's necessary. So shift F10 to get here to the command prompt, type disk part, D-I-S-K-P-A-R-T. That will launch this utility, type list disk, two words, and that will tell you the disks that are currently connected. Again, we have that disk zero, which is the SSD, and there's nothing wrong with it right now. It's a 240-ish gig SSD, about 223 gigs formatted. Uh, and then we also have disk one, which is the eight gig drive that uh, Windows is currently loading off of. Now, if we wanted, if disk zero was giving us some issues, if we were getting an error, like we can't install there or something, all we would do is type select disk zero, and then it will tell you it's the selected disk and then type clean. And then uh, hopefully it will tell you that it succeeded in cleaning the disk. And then you can type exit. There are more stuff, things, there are more things you can do with disk part, but I don't wanna, I don't, I don't wanna distract you guys too much from that. Anyway, then you hit refresh, or potentially you might need to restart the system and reload back into this operating system environment, but the drive should then pop up there if it, uh, or it should at least give you the op option to install into it. Uh, and then just hit next, and then it should automatically go through this next process and it'll tell you as it goes, copying files, getting files ready, installing, and blah, blah. Let's come back when this has gone through the motions. So one of the really nice things about installing Windows 10 off of a USB drive, as opposed to the older installation method of installing from a optical disc, is it's a lot faster. This whole process has only taken somewhere in the 10 to 15 minute range. Um, and you'll note that since I used the F11 to boot off of that USB drive, I didn't change the boot order that the motherboard has set up. So 
After it did the initial installation off of the USB drive, it restarted the system and then it went back automatically and started booting off of the SSD. If you've gone into the motherboard uh, boot order and you've told it to install off the USB drive, it can go through that initial setup process, reboot, and then boot off of the USB drive again and go back into that installation environment. If it does that, just shut the computer down, unplug that disk, and then boot it again and it should go uh, and start loading off of the stuff that's on the SSD or whatever drive you installed to. Uh, now this is the Get Going Fast page and um, we want to, om we, we always want to customize here. Um, this is where you can turn off the features that has Windows 10 track you. So I literally turn every single one of these switches off. There are two pages of them. I don't want it to do any of these things. Uh, I don't want it to automatically connect to hotspots. Uh, the one thing I sometimes leave on is using smart screen online services to help protect against malicious content and downloads and sites loaded by Windows browsers and store apps. That one I think is okay to leave on. Anyway, everything else turn off, hit next, and uh, in just a moment we'll be able to set up... Oh, well right now we'll be able to set up whether we're going to be using this computer um, by itself or as part of a Microsoft account. I usually use it by itself. I'm calling this computer 11 because it's a, in a core 1100. Uh, and then you you would always want to enter a password. I'm not going to do that for right now just for the sake of simplicity, but use a password. It's, it's a really good way to keep your computer much more secure. I'm going to pass on using Cortana for now as well. And I think I think Windows 10 is like almost installed now. It's the exciting part. You just, you never know when it's going to finish. <clears throat> oh good, let's start. Well, I don't think I've been doing a very good job of calling out the numbers for my five things here, but that is the end of thing four, which is installing Windows 10. Windows 10 is now installed. Uh, let's move on to the fifth thing, which is just going to be some of the basic setup procedures that you would want to go through in order to make sure Windows 10 is working properly. Now, you might notice I haven't actually connected the internet to this computer at this point um, because I was waiting for the moment of truth to find that out. Now, here's another fun thing. Windows 10, the installer, the information that is on this little USB drive, only has a certain amount of info when it comes to different hardware that it might encounter. Hardware that it encounters that it doesn't understand how to use, it needs a driver for. So what we're going to be doing is installing drivers to make sure the different el individual elements, the graphics card and the chipset and different parts of the motherboard, will play nicely with Windows 10. The other thing, and the reason this was a moment of truth, is you might notice when I plugged in just now, it immediately recognized that I'm connecting to a network. Uh, if it's a home network, you know, do, do what it says. I want to hit yes, um, since this is a home network. Now, if you plugged in the internet and it didn't work, it would mean that the Windows 10 operating system does not have an up-to-date driver for your network specifically. And that's an important one to, to get connected because that means you have internet connection. If you have just a network connected, then you can connect to the internet to download everything else you need as far as drivers go. Now, since this did work, I'm going to just load up the ASRock website and, and we'll go there. So I'm just gonna jump over to the ASRock website. Uh, this is the specific page for the motherboard, the B150M Pro 4V. And um, depending on the manufacturer, your layout might be different here. I don't know why it took me to the memory support list, but let's go to the download page. Uh, and then you can see the different drivers and utilities. Here you would select your operating system. We just installed Windows 10 64-bit, so we'll go with that. And then you would download the indiv individual drivers that you might want. Now the ones that I'm gonna download right now include the audio driver, the INF driver, INF, which is the one that's for the chipset, the Intel management engine driver. I'll also be downloading the LAN driver, even though the LAN's working, might as well get the up-to-date one. I'm not going to do the app charger, that is ASRock software, that's optional. This is a SATA floppy image. This is what we would have, would have needed uh, before we installed Windows 10, when, when I did that load driver option, if it wasn't recognizing the controller for the hard drives that we had connected. Again, we don't need that for now. I will get the Intel Rapid Storage Technology driver, uh, and then the VGA driver is if you're using the Intel uh, if you're using the Intel built-in graphics, um, since we're using NVIDIA, we will go to the NVIDIA website to download those. And from the NVIDIA GeForce driver website, we can uh, select the manual driver search. Since we know what GPU we just installed, it's a 1060, and we're on Windows 10, 60, with, ah, where'd it go? Windows 10 64-bit, and we'll hit start search, and we will download 
the latest Game Ready Drive. And there are all my downloads going. Uh, and Windows 10 will automatically download downloads to the downloads folder. And there they all are right there. Now that all of our drivers have finished downloading here, uh, we'll go ahead and install them one at a time. I like to make a folder on the desktop, call it drivers, keep things a little bit organized. And I usually start with the chipsets, and then after that the order doesn't really make too much of a difference, I don't think. But I will unpack one, load it up, hit set up chipset, and start to realize all the little tweaky things I need to do with Windows 10 to make it actually behave and do what I want. Anyway, we'll just hit next and accept and install and it will start installing things there, no big deal. In the meantime, oh, oh god, come back screen. It's just thinking about things. This is what happens while you install drivers, by the way, it's usually not a big deal. Oh good, changed the uh, layout there. Anyway, while we're doing this, we can hit view over here and go to options and change our folder options and change Open Ex File Explorer to this PC and go to view and, uh, you know, hit, hit the display and, and show hidden files and don't hide empty drives and especially don't hide extensions for known file types. That's stupid. Um, and then we hit OK and that makes things slightly better. Oh, now we can tell that this is an executable. For more fun tips like this, check out my first five things I do with a new Windows installation. Uh, it's still mostly relevant, even though it's a Windows 8 installation I was talking about there. Alright, one other thing to point out when you're installing drivers. If it tells you to restart, restart. Don't wait. Don't hit restart later. Just just restart. Give it a second. Just do things in the proper order. And uh, come back and then continue along the way. Now one thing you might notice as you're going through here and installing drivers and stuff is that Windows is also doing things on its own. Like, for example, I now have an NVIDIA control panel even though I haven't installed the NVIDIA drivers yet. Uh, Windows will automatically download WHQL, or Windows Home Qualified, I forget what it's called. Uh, it's, it's the Windows list where they have said, yes, these drivers are valid. However, um, they're not always up to date, so even though Windows downloaded this uh, NVIDIA driver, which is better than the default driver it was using, it's still 372.90, so I would still recommend um, rather than just letting Windows make all your decisions for you, still download the latest drivers. So for instance, here's the NVIDIA driver um, that I just downloaded, which is a little bit more up to date than the one that um, Microsoft downloaded for me. So we'll hit OK there, and we'll go ahead with the driver installation for the graphics. Um, of course, I still have all the other ones here that I downloaded the uh, LAN driver and management engine and stuff, so I'll continue with those. Um, but we also need to do one other important thing. We're getting much more closer to being able to just start going willy-nilly and installing Steam and installing like other apps and stuff like that. Um, Ninite, N-I-N-I-T-E, is a great website to do that. For all those little apps that you would go and download individually, uh, you can actually just choose a bunch of them with checkboxes and it will download an installer that does them all at the same time. What I'm going to do right now, though, is something that I should probably do while the system's off. But for SATA, it's usually not a big deal. I'm going to plug this uh, hard drive back in. So I'm restarting after having plugged that 3.5 inch drive in up at the top. Um, my plan here is to show you guys how to configure that drive to use as an additional piece of storage so you can start copying stuff over onto it and dropping it there. Um, since that was the last thing to plug in as well, I guess I can also replace this side panel. So if you connect up your additional storage drive and you open up this PC and you don't see it listed there, all we still have is just our normal hard drive. If it's a brand new uh, hard drive, this is what will happen. What we need to do is go into computer management, so right click this PC and go to manage, uh, and then we want to click on disk management over here. This will automatically pop up something that tells us our disks are not initialized. This is like a little wizard that goes through. I'm going to cancel this real quick, but if that does pop up for you, just go ahead and use it. Here we can see our drive is connected. It is recognized. It's simply not initialized and there's nothing allocated on it. So um, I can right click here and go to initialize. It brings up that same little wizard. This is the disk we want to initialize. You can choose MBR or GPT. Uh, always choose GPT if it's a larger than uh, two terabytes hard drive. Uh, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with GPT. I think that should be fine. Um, to go with MBR if it's a smaller driver, if you really need to make sure it will still be able to connect to older computers. Um, and finally, 
Even with that done, the drive still not, doesn't show up here in this PC because it's not allocated. So now we can see the disk. No little red mark indicating there's anything wrong. It is initialized. Right click on that unallocated space, click new simple volume. And then again, this will take you through wizard. Uh, yes, you want to drive letter, format it using NTFS. Uh, default allocation unit size is fine. Give it a label. We'll call it two terabyte storage because that's what it's gonna be. Quick format if you don't want to be waiting for an hour or two for a mechanical hard drive to format. Although if it is a used drive, you might consider doing a full format and just bear in mind it's gonna take a little while. Hit OK. Uh, it'll take just a second or two to format the drive and then it should pop up just as a new drive would or like a USB drive or something like that if you popped it in. And again, depending on the speed of the drive and how, how things are going with it. <laughs> it might take more time or less time, but there it is, two terabyte storage. So now we have a new empty two terabyte drive to drop all of our other excess crap onto. Or if we did something like using uh, a mechanical drive or an external drive and we had copied a bunch of stuff from an old computer, now so we can connect it back up, put it all in that extra storage drive, and then we'd be good to go. There is one last thing I think here that I should mention when it comes to initial setup, which is Windows updates. Uh, always, always check for updates. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but Windows will do this automatically itself, but I highly recommend uh, just doing it yourself. If it's a brand new installation, you'll just, you know, get things up to date more quickly. Type update, go to the uh, Windows update on the settings menu, click check, it will guaranteed find a bunch of updates. Uh, and it will automatically download them, and then from here you can also prompt it to automatically restart as well whenever it's finished. And um, I usually do that, restart if it asks me to, run it again, restart again and if it, if it asks me to again, and just get everything up to where it should be uh, for security purposes as well as making sure that if you're going to start benchmarking or something like that, you don't have it trying to do this in the background um, while you're trying to do something else entirely like running benchmarks. Speaking of benchmarks, that's all for this video. And yes, I have been running benchmarks on this system in both of its configurations. So as a 6100 uh, Core i3 with a uh, RX 460, as well as what it is now, which is a 6500 uh, Core i5 and the GTX 1060 from NVIDIA. Compare both of those systems to each other. In this configuration, it's about a $750 system overall, not including the operating system. The other configuration was a little bit less than 500, but I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious to know how much more power you get by going for an extra $200, $300 in price for the initial build. Uh, I have numbers for those. They'll be up very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button down there. Feel free to leave comments in the comment section as well if you have any questions about the detailed stuff or any issues as you're installing Windows. I will try to answer them. And I would like, like to say a huge thank you to those of you guys who, ha who do go in the comment section of my videos and give help and advice and support to other people because there's actually a lot of people giving really good advice. So I'm always proud when I see that. Thanks again for watching this video, guys, and we'll see you next time.